Hi, I'm Minister Carol, and I am here in Disciples Ignited. I'm doing some interviews, and I wanted to bring back Pastor Cheryl again. She had already been interviewed about how she loves to go on location and pray. I've known her for about 25 years. We've done a lot of work in the kingdom together, even though we're from different organizations. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're all part of the Jesus <laughs> team, right. and it's building the kingdom of God in Christ. So she went to many places like uh, palm readers, witchcraft, uh, Masonic, pornography, Masonic, yeah, Masonic Lodge. lodges, pornography, all kinds of places that are not really good for our society. And she, through Their prayer, gates of hell. with others helping her, <laughs> yes. yeah, they were able to shut these things down and see some miraculous things. She even told us that several of those places ended up becoming churches yes. after the things that were negative in the community. But out of that... Pastor Cheryl, and I've never, I don't think I've ever met two people like her husband, Pastor Richard, and her that care about people more than they do. And, and they really reach out in just extraordinary ways to help people out of a life of sin and into the kingdom of light with Jesus. And so it brought to mind this scripture here in Matthew chapter 25. And this so describes uh, Pastor Richard and Pastor Cheryl Sejour, mm -hmm. and it's, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on the right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did it for me. That so describes Pastor Cheryl. Oh. Go ahead and tell us your story. Well, hallelujah. Oh, I, I just, I really want to emphasize for everyone that's watching mm -hmm. that it's all about his love. It's all about the Father's love. And the more we can have a heart like his, and it's going to take just surrender, just surrender to him. Like there is nothing in Richard and I that at all, it's, it's only that we were like, I didn't get saved until I was 35 years old. Wow. And when I was at that age, family, married, kids, everything, I was the most selfish, um, stubborn, rebellious, self-centered person um and i had this huge hole inside of me and i was just filling it with oh let me buy it have a beautiful house let me do this let me do that and i was empty and, and to just i really need wow. to say this to those that are watching because just because i'm a pastor it doesn't you know sometimes there's a mindset that oh you're a pastor oh yeah well that's different no no i'm only pastoring because God took this messed up heart that was void of love, full of rejection, full of hopelessness, to the point that I tried to commit suicide two times before I got saved. And God, maybe another time we can share about that, but God miraculously saved my life because he had a purpose. And for those that are watching, God has a purpose for you. And no matter if you feel stuck, no matter if you feel like, if you're full of like comparison, fearing, I, I can never be like her. No, God doesn't want you to be like her or like him. God wants you to be you. And you will be you when you surrender, when you, rent, when you just really truly come to the cross. Jesus died for you so that you, you can surrender all those things, the things of the past that hurt you. Give God those hurts. Give God that pain. Give God everything. And I'll tell you, that day, that day that I received the seed of Jesus, you know, it says the entrance of his word brings light, and Jesus is the word. 
And it was like Jesus just entered into this broken heart that came to, it just, I opened up my heart through another sister that really saw how stubborn I was and how prideful I was. And she knew when God told her, you need to go and share the gospel with Cheryl. She's like, really? Ooh, I need to fast and pray about that one because there's no hope for her. And so then, but you know, she did and she obeyed and she came and she came right after a week after I tried the second suicide attempt that wow. she knew nothing about. Wow. I was ready. I had no peace and she was full of peace. So I'm just saying like, just be faithful in the little things. Like God gave her this abundant peace and that was the very thing I needed to see. My husband wasn't saved. He was going with the Jehovah Witnesses and I didn't, and he was just like holding the Bible in my hand going, you know, you need to read the word, Cheryl. You need to pray, you know, you need to go, you know, all this pressure that was, just man trying to get my heart and God knew all I needed was to see the real true light and peace of God and hear that truth that's going to set me free and that very day when I received the light and I just encourage you if you received him and you feel like but it has not it hasn't gone very much you know not much more depth to my relationship with God guess what you meet with him and you invite more and more and more of his love and his life and his light to to flood your soul and you will be so surrendered he will begin speaking to you and showing you how valuable you are and i just don't want to see anybody on this call just say oh well that's good for her no god wants this god wants all of us to walk in a type of incarnational ministry mm -hmm. And so I want to read this scripture because uh, I had, had to say that because the only thing that's moved us to say yes to Jesus, to give up everything and come to Miami is the love of Father God. The only thing that has kept us when we didn't know what to do was the love of Father God, just knowing he loves me. I, I can't go by what I'm seeing all around me. He loves me. I'm fully, fully accepted. And he's with me all the time. That, Amen. that right there, it, I mean, it wasn't just lips. Or, I mean, that's what moved us. And then he gave us that scripture, Isaiah 61, verses 1 to 4, that the spirit of the Lord has anointed you to preach the good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to set, cap set the liber liberty to those that are captive. And why? So that they can become oaks of righteousness. A planning of the Lord that he would be glorified. And that became our life scripture. I'm like, oh my goodness, God. You are so loving and so merciful that you would take me out of this miry pit. And actually, because you love me and you really have a purpose, he already knew he was sending us to Miami. He already knew he was sending us to a, a dark, dark land. People that were fractured lives, fractured lives, and that he was going to bring healing to them. He knew all that. We didn't know anything. <laughs> so he has a plan for you, those that are watching. Mm -hmm. He has a plan that is so good. And it's going to, it's, you know what? You're going to be so prosperous and successful according to God's way because your soul will be prospering. If your soul is prospering, that's all that matters because, because everything stays in alignment that way, right? Mm -hmm. So, and so I want to read from, it's, it, I, I, I was reading this the other day. It was um, a reading from a, a book, a passage that they had, John 1, 14. I love that scripture. But they, they shared it in the Passion Version. And so um, I would love to read that to us right now. And it's, 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 I'm reading it because it's, it's expanding on incarnational ministry. And somebody said that to me a few years ago and I pushed it aside I didn't really study it but incarnational ministry Jesus was the word and he became flesh and came and dwelt amongst us so he could show us the love of the father right Amen. by his ministry Amen. but when we receive the word you know the word of God is so powerful and, and it, it transforms us. And the more we read God's word, 
we begin, we really like old patterns and old attitudes and old ways and old things that we lived for so long, whether it was just the way our family did things or whatever it might be, the word of God is pure. Like, like silver refined in a fire seven times over. It's so pure. And he, the living word, came and lived inside of us. And he just wants to shine his light on the different areas deep inside of us. That when he, light doesn't fight. When, when, when light comes in, it literally, it, it doesn't fight. It just drives away the darkness. It just Darkness cannot be where light is. And so when we welcome him to go deeper and he goes into the little dark crevices of our heart, his light and his presence free us. It shows us, oh, that is there. Okay, God, I surrender that. He shows us other things in our heart. Okay, I surrender that. So he begins to invade us so that we begin. I mean, we are so far from living the life of Jesus on this earth, but that's what we're going that, that's what we're going for right <laughs> yes, right so here it is it says and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we have seen his glory glory as of the only son from the father full of grace and truth that's the esv version okay that's the one we're mostly familiar with but the message translation says the word became flesh and blood and moved into our neighborhood Woo! <laughs> it moved into our neighborhood we saw the glory with our own eyes the one-of-a-kind glory the father the son generous inside and out true from start to finish oh yeah. don't we want that to be us carol yeah. like yeah. That we, you know, if we are really full of light and full of God's love, we should be able to step into a room. And mm -hmm. everybody in the dark knows it. Mm -hmm. We should be able to step into a store. And people, like, but that's what you've done. <laughs> and some lives that I've known and watched. <laughs> but I want more. Like, Amen. it's like when you experience it once or twice or three times, you yes. just want more. You mm -hmm. just want more. You just want more. Um... And I'm, I'm seeing it in different leaders that are sharing the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. And others are, are like, it's like the light is just exposing and revealing to them how they were trapped. And they really, the sun, you know, he whom the sun sets free is free indeed. But they were realizing I have the sun, but I'm still not free indeed. You know, it is a process, right? It is such a process. Of and you know, we've been going to your church for different activities for years with yeah. you. And so I literally have gotten to see, they were young people then, <laughs> it's been a while, yeah. but I've seen them come into their church, they want them to the Lord, yeah. and through time, as I go back every couple of years and I see them, they have grown and grown Man. and grown, because you all have shared the light of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit too and the word of God. Yes, so and that unconditional those, love. Because yeah. there's some stories I just love about some of these people. I know who some of them are, but we're going to keep them. We're going to keep their names, names yeah, yeah, anonymous. anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so one of the, well, again, I really sense, not that we're not called to wealthy, comfortable people. Mm -hmm. It's not that we're not called to that. We'll be obedient to do whatever. But I know that deeply, deeply our calling is to go to those that are broken and bruised and hurting and um, fractured. Um, and so with that, in my, he just kept leading us. And so he would lead us down to one example is um, we would go down to Liberty City, Overtown and North Miami. Those were when we first got here, we were like, you know, just lead us to the hurting, lead us, lead us to those leaders that are still trapped in sin, right? Mm -hmm. Basically, like I was. I was. A, God knew I was going to be a leader, but I was trapped in sin. Someone needed to come and rescue me. So, so anyways, we went to Hadley Park, Richard and I, and um, and we were there. And there's this guy who was um, probably about six foot three, four, very tall. Had long, long dreads. Um, he had uh, just, you know, I just knew, like, I wasn't judging by what he wore, but in the spirit, in the spirit, I knew he was really in the dark. 
And the Lord said, I want you to go to him and I want you to share. I said to Rashur, see that guy, honey, over there? <laughs> Leaning against the fence with a cigarette in his mouth. I said, or maybe it's a reefer. I don't know, but it's one of the two. Um, God's told me to go. He said, oh, Gerald, Gerald, uh, are you sure you've heard from God? I said, oh, I've heard from God. I've heard from God. I know I'm supposed to go share it again. He said, okay, I will stand and I will intercede. And I, the minute I took the first step, he was an Afro-American guy. The minute I took the first step, I heard this voice saying, he hates white people and he has a switchblade in his pocket. Mm. Okay, you know what? If I didn't know the voice of God, I would have just made my little U-turn and said, okay, honey, let's go to someone else. <laughs> but I'll tell you, those that are watching, oh, when we know the voice of God, then when the enemy, he knows what we're about to do, he will come in ways that he, very sneaky. We know the schemes of the enemy. We are not unaware of the enemy's schemes. Amen. So he'll come in ways that he knows I'm not very fearful. I'm not, it takes all, I mean, I am, a, I, Richard gets upset sometimes because I'm a little bit too fearless. Like, you know, like you better have heard from God, you know. And so I took that step. And when he said that, the next voice that came was, I've asked you to go and share my love and my truth with him. Well, which voice are you going to listen to? <laughs> you know? So I walked towards him. And honestly, word for word, I can't remember all that I said to him. But I just said, the God that made you sent me to you right now. Just like that. And that part is what I really remember. And he looks up and he... He kind of stands up like, you know, kind of got his attention a little bit. And again, the enemy, right while I'm like two feet away from the guy, the enemy's like, he's got a switchblade in his, in his pocket. Watch out. <laughs> so I'm in the middle of this battle and I had to stay focused. I just had to remain in the light, walk in the light, remain in the light. Don't speak anything God didn't tell me to speak and just... And he's, he's looking at me, and I looked at him deep in the eyes. And the, as I looked at him deep in the eyes, the Lord, you know how the Holy Spirit says that he's given, given us word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discernment, all, you know. He gave me a word of knowledge about this guy. He showed me him, like, shrunk, like a little kid, and being abused. Oh. Uh, and I all, I just, tears started welling up in my eye. He's looking at me straight in the eyes, and I'm looking at him straight in the eyes, and tears are welling up. He doesn't know what I'm seeing. And it just came out. Like, it just came out. I, I said, when you were a little boy, about five or six years old, you were abused. And it brought a lot of pain to your heart. Oh, wow. And I said, but you know what? God sent me to you today because he wants you to know that he loves you he loves you so much and he wants to heal that pain and he has a purpose for you. I'm telling you, this guy started crying. Wow. And, and he was going like this, like crying. He was like, how do you know that? How do you know that? How do you, I've forgotten about that. I said, well, you know what? You haven't forgotten about it, but the one who knows you most, he remembers and he wants to bring healing to you today and he wants you to know that you're, the God that made you is alive. He's real and he's here right now. Uh, we were there for 45 minutes. By that time, Richard kind of stepped in a little closer. I said, oh, this is my husband, by the way, you know? Uh, and, and we just began to minister to this man. He got saved, he got set free. And I went back to visit him again. We met in the park and with Richard. And it turns out, so from this guy, we went and did a rock jam in, in, in what they call pork and beans, which is like a, a very, very low income, a lot yeah, of shooting, just, a lot of yeah. stuff going on in there. Um, we had a rock jam in the field and brought all our leaders there. And that guy was there and he had a shofar in his hand. <laughs> Wow. And he had a shofar. And he goes, Mama, 
and he couldn't get across the field. He's like, Mama! And I'm like, Whoa, is that you, Antoine? And he's like, Yeah, Mama! Oh my goodness, I'm going all around Liberty City and I'm blowing my shofar. And, and he was he's working with the youth and all of that stuff. Now he's moved to Georgia, but but back, I was just like, if I miss that moment. See, love drives away all fear. And that's why I started with that was, it has nothing to do with me. It's only the love of God that can lead us and guide us and drive away the fear to clear the way for the people, the very people. Like, God knew this gangster guy was going to be a leader. Like, you know, he knew and he knew who's going to be bold enough to share with him. You know, and it's like the righteous are as bold as a lion, right? When you know you've heard God's voice, boy, you better do it. Because I know if I, I know me, I I know me. If I would not, if I would have given into that voice of fear, I would have been grieving all day long. Like literally, I, if I missed an opportunity and I know I did because I gave into fear, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. See, some of us just think fear is a feeling. He says God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. It's a spirit that comes to torment us. It's a spirit that puts those thoughts in our mind and causes it to get into our emotions. What you think is what you feel, and what you feel is what you do. And so when you when so that's one of the guys. One, yeah, one of the praise God, Hallelujah! It's an awesome testimony. Go ahead. I know you have more, especially all the young ladies <laughs> yes, that you've reached yes, out to. Yes. Praise God. So the we just were out on the streets a lot. Um, we went to the high schools a lot, and we would sometimes would just wait until the high school was dismissed, so that we could be led by the Lord to speak to people and stuff. So. Um, Quite a few of the girl, young girls, we actually ministered to at the at the um, at the high school. We began to meet with them near the library, and then gradually, I just invited them into our home, and we began to have Bible studies. We were in our backyard a lot, and then then we one day I was um, at home, and the Lord said, "Go to the high school, and go into the main lobby, and you will see a tall man with a such and such color T-shirt." okay, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go to the lobby and look for that tall man. It was a student. And he, this young man, I went to him and I said, um, do you have, do you, are, you, are you a Christian? He's like, yeah. I said, well, God told me to come here today. And he told me to look for you. And so, you know, I don't know what it is that, you know, what, and he's like, Wow, God told you that? I said, yeah, we're missionaries from Canada. We've just been here for about five months, and this is what he told me to do. And he's like, oh, my goodness, I've been praying to God because we want to start a Bible club here at the high school, and we just don't. I said, wow, that's why he sent us, so that we can encourage you about doing it, so that we can meet with you, encourage you, help you, come alongside of you to do it. He's like, oh, my goodness. So he came to our house after <laughs> afterwards. Praise and God. And then... How about this guy, and you would know all these guys, I won't mention them by name, but he began this Bible club, and even when you weren't supposed to have other adults come in, Richard and I would go in and minister. <laughs> this Bible club, within a year, there was 45 Christians in this Bible club. How I mean, you? it was like the Spirit of God would just fall in that place, and then most of those people became a part of our church. Wow. And came in. I mean, we would have Bible studies at our little house, and everybody was there, and they were out into the kitchen, <laughs> out the front door had to open, they were out in the porch, and they were just like, they had been so, um, you know, and no offense, but, you know, there's a lot of certain denominations, certain um, cultures that uh, still hold on to religiosity, and and it really brings a lot of pain to the young people. They, these young people, the story that they shared the most was they have no relationship with their parents. If their parents were churchgoers, they had no relationship with them either. Oh, that wow. they would be judging mm. them. They would be um, religious, you know, you gotta wear this, you gotta do that. Oh, you can't, you know, you can't wear makeup. Oh, you can't, like just so many bondages, it just, who would want to know Jesus, right? Like, who would want to know God? Like, 
I was so non, I never went to church in my life when I got saved. Like if somebody would have started telling me that, I'd be like, that is the last time I hear about Jesus. I am not listening. Wow. <laughs> but so it was like God was using us to, to just be a conduit of love to them. Mm -hmm. uh, that they could taste and see that they were loved just for who they are. So mm -hmm. that was one. And then the next one was I the women. I want to interject here, though, yeah. for a second. During the Jesus movement, which we were, my husband and I were a part of, um, we were hippie types. I mean, I, I didn't get into the drug aspect of it. I was an actual Jesus freak. So I wore the jeans, and I wore the T-shirts, and the big crosses, and we carried big Bibles. And we did, back then, churches... Women only wore dresses, you know. Wow. But the churches that received the Jesus people, they grew. They grew not only wow. numerically, but huh. the presence of the Lord. And those who would not, because they wanted the guys to cut their hair, because that's back when the guys wore their hair down their back. Cut your hair, you know. Get back in a dress, you know. Look like you're supposed to be at church. Those are the people that wow. didn't get the Jesus people. There you go. In the harvest. Yeah. So it's the same thing. They missed a lot about. of opportunities. They really did. So wow. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, it's really. And then the last one that I really was a, a dear time. I know we only have a few minutes left, but um, the last time, the, the the one of the times that was just so dear to my heart was. Um, some of the women that I've been reaching out to and all of them had fractured families. I mean, when you heard their stories, I remember one time hearing their stories were so painful to me, I couldn't sleep at night. Mm -hmm. Like I was wrestling, grieving for the pain that these girls had carried. Yeah. It really, like, um, it was the love of God in me that, that was causing me to feel that way. And then the Lord asked me this, I said, oh God, like, what can I do? Like, how can I show your love? Like, can I give them clothes? Can I, like, you know, I was asking, he said, Cheryl, I am their savior, not you. <laughs> and so, so like, that's where, even, you know, like I'm saying, it's a process, right? right? Like, I just want to go deeper. And when he exposes something to me, I better listen mm -hmm. because I would have become so burdened, all these fractured, broken lives, what could I do, you know, if, if I didn't listen to God? So I had to surrender more, surrender deeper, and get his will. So he told me, okay, round up all the girls. So I was discipling them. I, I just, we have always preached discipleship, discipleship, and let me put that plug in there. Spirit-filled discipleship by Dr. David Fleming. <laughs> You guys got to get those books, all three of them. So look it up on Amazon. Uh, <laughs> he didn't tell me to do that, but I'm, I'm doing it because it is good stuff. Like it is exactly what you need, exactly what I need. So, um, so I invited these ladies to my home and I, I went to, I said, I'm going to have you for dinner. And I, and so I went to go set the table. Richard took the boys and Nikisha out and, and um, went to have, set up the table, and the Lord said, no, I want you to set the table. I want you to set the table. And I said, oh. And then he drew me to my china cabinet, which all the stuff that my mother had given me and stuff. And he said, no, I want you to set the table with your best. Wow. And she had like 18 karat gold rimmed plates and all these things that were just given to me. Wow. Crystal glasses and all these things. So I began to weep. I was like, oh, you really want to reveal their value. I realized why he said it. So, oh, I started like going the extra mile, polishing the <laughs> silver. I had silver out of the silver chest and the whole thing. And I started praying over every chair, praying over every... I said, oh, I don't know what you're going to do here tonight, Lord, but it's something. So they came over, and we met in the living room, and, you know, we did our little Bible study. And um, a lot of ministry took place. A lot of, a lot of uh, hurt and pain was brought forth. And I said, well, I cooked a meal for you guys. I know it's not Haitian. It's a little Canadian dish that I make. And so um, he said, okay. And so I brought them in. I had candle lit dinner. Oh, wow. I mean, I had the whole works. Praise God. And they walked in and you could just see like their mouths dropped. Their eyes went wide open. There's five of them. 
and they all, I said, Marie, you can, so-and-so, you can sit there, so-and-so, you can sit there, and they sat around the table, and I look, and one of them's these great big tears. You know how somebody's crying, but they're not, <laughs> it's just great, just tears flushing down their faces, landing on their plate, like it was big tears. And I'm like, so-and-so, are you okay? And she said, I've never sat at a table before to eat. And I went around the room, around the table, and three out of those five ladies had never sat at a table. The love of God invaded their hearts that night. And those particular three are the strongest leaders that we have. Amen. They knew they were loved unconditionally and accepted and valued. And that's what our mission is, isn't it? Amen. To let people know that. And I can testify that I know these young ladies. They have grown so much. Many of them now minister, prophesy, pray for others. Mm -hmm. When you had your women's conference last year, one of them was in a wheelchair. And yes. the other one was standing beside her. And these are some of those original ladies. Yeah. They were praying for all the young women at this women's conference, girls in their teens and early 20s. They were all getting slain in the spirit, even with her being in the wheelchair. And she can't speak. She, yeah, she can't speak. She was reaching out for those ladies, and they were all fall out. See what the love of God can do. Yes. I encourage you. Yes. Get to know the Seigneurs. You're going to be a changed person. They change people's lives through the power of the Lord. Oh. We thank you for being with us thank today. You. This is, yes, I'm so glad I to have you. I love being with you yes. guys. Minister Carol from Disciples Ignited, God bless you. God bless you. Have a great day.